and welcome to Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Seth. And I'm Parasim. And Snake is out sick this week, so none of that. We Plague victim snake action figure coming in near future. Uh, I was also laid out sick last week, so, you know, that would explain why we didn't have a show then. Uh, however, seeing as the semester is ending soon, uh, which includes my work with WLRA, 88.1 FM The Start, in Lewis University in Romeoville, Illinois, I uh, figured, you know, we'd better get our butt in gear and finish out the last couple of weeks. Uh, so, not a whole lot to talk about this week, but we'll do our best. So, Sen, you play fighting games? I do! I do. Have you heard of Dive Kick? I have heard of Dive Kick. Would you like me to talk about Dive Kick for a few minutes? Tell me what Dive Kick is. So, Dive Kick is a two dimensional fighting game that features only two buttons. The buttons, adequately named Dive and Kick, are also the names of the lead characters of the game. Well, are those buttons adequately named? Because what does the Dive button do? The Dive button is actually your jump command. It leaps you into the that air. That seems like a terribly inadequate name. So you would rather have it be named Jump Kick? Well, I mean, hitting the Dive button and moving upwards does not seem terribly intuitive. But that's just right. me being a, a right. punk. So yeah, you've got the one button you press to leap in the air, and it is pressure sensitive, so it does respond to how hard you press the button and how long you hold the button. Uh, it basically determines how high and how fast you leap into the air. And then the other button, Kick, actually brings you down at an angle. And actually, there are characters in the game that can leap at different angles. Uh, There are more than two at this point. I can't remember the names of any of the other characters, but they're all, like, ironically named stereotypical fighting game characters. I have them right here. There is Uncle Sensei, Kung Pao, Mr. N, and a Dr. Victoria Scholes. Yes. The entire game is just... It it started out as a uh, satire of competitive fighting game circuits, And what ended up coming up was actually a really deep game that a lot of people are really having fun with, and they've been bringing it to fighting game tournaments and actually having people get really into it. So they will be doing a full release for this. (laughs) I I missed a character, apparently. There's a character named Redacted, who is a Wolverine. And not like Wolverine the X-Man, like an actual animal Wolverine. Because why not? Yeah, um... It's been gaining a lot of popularity amongst the fighting game circuit because of how deeply technical the idea of a game that only has two buttons and instant kills is. Uh, so this reminds me of another thing that I can't remember the name of at the moment. What was the sword game that also was one-hit kills that was supposed to be you realistic? You would be thinking of Bushido Blade. And yes, Bushido Blade is similar to this concept, although uh, in Bushido Blade what you're actually working with is killing blows. So, like, you could hit a person... And it wouldn't be fatal, depending on where you hit them. But, like, a torso hit with the, the the main part of the blade, yeah, that's just, the fight is over. But also, it was possible in that game for your characters to lose uh, to the Bushido code because, um, because you, say, hit your opponent in the back or fought dishonorably. So that was the interesting thing about that game. Uh-huh. Yeah, very, very Actually, much on the same concept. I guess I'm misrepresenting it when I call Dive Kick one-hit kills, because what it actually is, according to the creator, is uh, every character has 100 health, and every attack does 5,000 damage. Yes. It is beyond one-hit destruction. Dive Kick looks phenomenal, the creators have a great sense of humor, and I cannot wait to see more out of that game. There's so little game there that it's, it's very appealing for that reason. It's like, you cannot walk backwards, you cannot walk forwards, you can only Dive Kick. You can dive, and you can kick, and there's a chance that if you miss your opponent, you'll just end up going right past him, at which point your character will flip around, and it'll be pretty much like resetting the match. There's this weird, tense mind game of who is going to make the first move and make themselves vulnerable by it's getting like that, uh It's like the those professional bicycle races where, like, two people, two dudes are, like, trying to be slowest in that last lap. Exactly. It is like Thumb War, the video game. So there's a lot of weird, awkward waiting and mind games. I don't know. I can definitely dig what they're trying to do with Dive Kick. Like, I I like the idea of, yeah, this is a fighting game that is all based on reading your opponent and predicting what they're going to do, rather than it's about who could memorize moves the best. There are very few moves to memorize. Although, it is... I recently learned that it is not just uh, the jump and the kick button. Uh, apparently, you can also do things by hitting both buttons at the same time. So I think this game is too complicated for me. Yep, yep, right out. That, that's it. We're done. We're done here. Apparently, Uncle Sensei flips over and walks on his hands. (laughs) 
And then he kicks with his hands, and you might think that would be called a punch, but no, it is a hand kick. That is a hand kick. There's a difference. All right, so what so, else are we talking about? Pixie, you like the Arkham Asylum and Arkham City games, right? Yeah. How would you feel if I told you there's going to be another one? Suspicious. <laughs> well, there's going to be one, and it's called Arkham Origins. Yep. Presumably, it's going to be a prequel. I, I say that only based on the name. We'll have I multiplayer, this according to this Kotaku article in front of me. See, my theory is... Yes, Arkham it is a prequel. Uh, first, to have any multiplayer. And, my theory is yeah. That Arkham Origins is actually you playing as young Bruce Wayne the moment that your mother and father are killed, just being led through the police station, having your statement taken, being driven home by Alfred, and then you get to play the next, like, eight years before he wigs out and, like, goes, on, uh, runs away overseas. And we've also got a handheld spin off called Arkham Origins Blackgate for the 3DS and Vita. Wait, what Sen what, is what's proposing a Vita? is a joke that we have made on this show like a number of times, but I really want games that just radically subvert the paradigm of being a video game and are just like weird interactive but not challenging like emotional experiences, just like daily life simulators. I want The Sims not from a god perspective. I want The Sims where you're just a dude. And I want your, GTA your goal for the day is without the crime. Your entire goal for the day in that version of The Sims is, I will be at home at this time to watch this on television. It's like, man, I have this weird chemical depression problem and sometimes I get sad and so <laughs> I, I, have, I eat chocolate and then I get fat and then then I get in a better place in my life and I exercise and I get fit and then I get a girlfriend and just like this weird real life simulator. Why has nobody made that game? Okay, so that's a little odd. Are we ready for the next topic? Because I got. One. Uh, well, I was gonna go on about Batman: Arkham Origins for a bit. Okay, okay. Back to you. Tell us more. Uh, releases October twenty fifth, twenty thirteen. But again, release dates generally lies, so I'll believe it when it's you know on the shelf. And by on the shelf, I mean you know behind the counter, available for purchase, because nobody actually puts the games on the shelf anymore. But um. Yeah. Uh, the handheld version is a totally separate quote-unquote experience, according to this GameInformer.com article, uh, that takes place after the events of Arkham Origins. So, we've got a prequel to a prequel. What? <laughs> a prequel uh... to a prequel that hasn't been released yet. Yes. They're gonna, like, I guess they're the both gonna, I guess they're gonna be released simultaneously type of thing. They mean that the handheld game is gonna be crap. That's what that means. Well, the handheld games are usually crap, like, as a general rule. This is why I was very upset about the only female assassin who got her own game in the Assassin's Creed franchise was put on the Vita and therefore doomed to fail. Yep. And then they are, and then publishers are going to point at that and go, see, female protagonists don't sell. They absolutely are. I guess the one redemptive or thing perhaps I can have. say about Liberation is that while Liberation wasn't very good, neither was Assassin's Creed 3. So, you know, parody. All right. So, uh, according to this Game Informer article... Uh, Arkham Origins is going to take place years before both of the Ark other Arkham titles when a young, unrefined Batman encounters many supervillains for the first time. Uh, Deathstroke is going to be in it, and that's basically all we know. <laughs> that and there's going to be some multiplayer where you can play as a member of Joker or Bane's gangs while trying to take down Batman and Robin in the multiplayer mode. This sounds a little bit silly because, like, wasn't part of the point of the, like, the Batman villains that they don't like each other, so it's always a huge deal when they get together. And so Batman encountered them all over a vastly spread out period of time. Maybe there's going to be flash forwards in the timeline. I could only assume that's how that would work, because, like, Batman villains always have to, like, be stepping it up over the time. Like, it was, uh, I'm beating up this rich fat guy who calls himself the Penguin. Ah, uh, now there's this crazy clown guy called the Joker. Oh man, I finally got beat by this giant guy called Bane, because I'm not used to fighting people who are physically tougher than me. I, I thought that was always kind of the point of the Batman villains, like, they step it up over time. Uh, I've also got some commentary um, from the from our fans on the Facebook page, if we're done with this. Uh, is this going to be a wait and see? Is this a definite buy? What are, we, what are we looking at here? I don't know, the previous Arkham games I've found to be highly enjoyable with, like, the added exploration and being able to play as Catwoman. I was skeptical of Arkham City, and my skepticism proved unfounded. Like, I was coming at it from the perspective of, well, I liked the Arkham Asylum gameplay, but this just seems like a, not a very creative variation on that, but the open world added a lot to it. I am skeptical once again in a similar fashion. I'll probably am... try it out again. <clears throat> I am also 
skeptical, but for some other reasons. Uh, namely, looking back at the other two games, they were so good, where do you go from there? How do you improve or build upon that? More to the point, um, if this is a prequel, Joker's probably going to be in it. Joker's almost definitely going to be in it. And Mark Hamill's already, you know, said ages ago that he's not doing any more Joker voice work. So this is like David Hayter not voicing Snake in the new uh, Metal Gear Solid game. I don't know how I'm going to feel about that or if I'm going to warm up to a new voice actor reprising the role. And uh, there's definitely not going to be any turnaround on that Mark Hamill thing, because the reason he's getting out of the game is not just because he's retiring or anything, uh, but because it was damaging his vocal cords to do that particular type of performance. So, Which is kind of like a weird symmetry with the character who was deteriorating at the time physically as well. Yeah, I mean, that was that couldn't have been handled better. I mean, that said, I mean, did any of you see the, uh, the 2010 animated Batman special Under the Red Hood? Eh... I, know, to... I think you caught me watching this uh, the other weekend. So I might have seen it. I don't remember. Uh, that that actually has Do John DiMaggio portraying uh, the Joker in that uh, video. He does a really good job with, like, a deeper, more aggressive Joker. Hmm. Like, he's distinctly less playful than, than the Mark Hamill version, but still does a really great job. Uh, similarly, a very new mainstream release, Injustice Gods Among Us, the NetherRealms fighting game, has a Joker character voiced by Richard Epcar, who, well, let me say that I love Mark Hamill so, so much and take it as a personal betrayal anytime Mark Hamill is not, like, anywhere. I just want him to voice act all of the roles. Uh, but the Joker in Injustice Gods Among Us is serviceable. I could probably make it work. Yeah, you can get by with impersonating the Mark Hamill performance, which I think is what we're going to see for a while. Um, Reading the wiki entry on uh, Batman Under the Red Hood, I feel like I I've have. read this. Arkham but... Origins probably won't be good. Like, Rocksteady and has shown their silence. core competency enough that Arkham Origins will probably be a good game, but I feel like they really should have gone and made an Iron Man game or something different. They should have made a Catwoman game. They should have made, like, a Dark Side game where Dark Side is the protagonist. I don't know how that would work, but do it. To be fair, Sega has been making Iron Man games since the first Iron Man movie. They've just all been terrible. I, I cannot think of a single Iron Man game off the top of my head. There's a reason you don't remember them. Also, a Catwoman game would be amazing! And, like, that is something that Rocksteady could do and reuse assets. Yeah, they could reuse assets. They've already set it up. Like, this would be great. Because she, like, just kind of walks out of the story in Arkham City. So you can totally pick up where with where the hell did she go after that? It'd be so, so Arkham easy. Is probably going to be good, but I feel like they're not picking up a lot of potential that they could by doing the same thing that they've been doing for a while. Uh, all right, so are we done with that? Yeah. Um I've got a couple comments from people on our Facebook page that I want to address. Uh one person Kyle wants us to um Make sure that we know how sexy we are. It is important information. So important even that it might be considered a PSA. So thank you for that, Kyle. <laughs> I'm gonna have to Nerd talk as a on. unit is apparently sexy, and we know it. Sexy as noted. Justin Timberlake has... We, we need to get Justin Timberlake on the podcast now, just so that we can know how sexy we are. Uh, That's how I, dedicated we are to servicing our viewer requests. Is that a bringing sexy back reference? Because I made an LMFAO reference instead. LMFAO is another good place to go. Mostly, I would go for uh, Sexy Back just because I want Justin Timberlake on the podcast, because he's pretty sweet. He's a pretty cool Speaking dude. of which, have you used the new MySpace since we got those invites? No, have you? I have not either. Well, actually, I have for like 10 minutes, and it seemed like it was this like very weak, weak social network that had an MP3 player Dude, I can't even it. get people to use Google+. And that's backed by Google. <laughs> yeah. I can hardly even get me to use Facebook. I use Twitter sometimes, but not... I've even been behind on my Twitter. Man, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like Twitter is a place for a very particular kind of wit uh, that I do not have. I tend to be a I little bit not... too verbose for Twitter. Also, people tend to be have... very active on Twitter, like, stupid late at night in my time zone. And so I feel like I can't participate in those conversations because... Everybody's, like, sleeping while I'm awake and checking them the following morning. I actually subvert that in a very humorous way, uh, which is that I follow a lot of Eastern Europeans on Twitter, and they're all tweeting in the middle of the night for them, which is the daytime for me, so it's like, oh. Perhaps perfect. I need to adopt that strategy. <laughs> all of the nocturnal Eastern Europeans are tweeting, and this is working out for me. I, I may uh, borrow that strategy from you. 
Okay, so I have a segment to introduce if we'd like. Go for it. So Pyro, I can see from my Steam account that you purchased a game called Deponia. Want to talk about it? Did I purchase Deponia? I it, totally didn't. My thing totally says you own Deponia. Man, I own Deponia. Why do I own Deponia? <laughs> I do not even know what this game is. Why do it you own totally Deponia? It is totally here in my Steam library. <laughs> Right? <laughs> it might have been really cheap. Listen, viewers, I am a sucker for, for discounts. So I'm looking at this game, and it genuinely looks like a junkyard steampunk romantic comedy adventure game. I did not think I would ever hear those words arranged in that particular order. Right? These but screenshots are making me want to do some pointing and clicking. I I'm watching the three trailers that they've got posted for it, and it looks highly entertaining. Plus, it has a demo. Up, uh, uh, up, downloaded. Thank you, demo. Like, You're dude. really going to be downloading games while we're trying to do a podcast over the internet? Who actually has a decent internet connection? <sighs> you realize your audio still goes out for us on occasion, right? Well, how is it right now? Well, right now? Yeah, right now. Right now, right now. It's fine, but... Like, now, now. Because right now I'm 20% into the download. Surely this must have been Just part of a humble bundle. This must be how I own Deponia. Again, it's Steam. I know what you do with <clears> your time. <throat> At any rate, so, LucasArts is done as a video game developer. <laughs> and this puts, uh, was it Star Wars 1313? And serious question as to whether we're ever going to see it. Uh, not serious question. It's kaput. Oh. Active projects that were, like, in progress from LucasArts' developing house are no more. This makes me really sad, because it Turns out from a late reveal that that was actually going to be a game about Boba Fett. Um, apparently 150 staff members lost their job as a result of Disney Interactive Studios uh, shutting them down. Is the last has been thing. super schizophrenic with regards to what they want to do with their video game development. So they churned arms. out Angry Birds Star Wars back in early November of last year. Really? That wasn't even a rodeo? And that was, I that... think, the last thing they put out. Oh, wait. Yeah, it was licensed by LucasArts, so yeah. I guess that's not even a thing yeah, they Romeo actively developed. Um, to, to be completely fair, when was the last time you remember playing a LucasArts game? They had three <laughs> untitled games in development, an open-world RPG, a first-person shooter, and an aerial combat game, in addition to Star Wars 1313 and First Assault. Sen, I will inform you that I was playing a LucasArts game merely this February. Yeah? It was Tales of Monkey Island. <laughs> Which, okay, that doesn't count at all. But, yeah, no, that's not you know. LucasArts, that's Telltale. Um, you're right, it was Ed Monkey Island 1, whatever that's called, Adventure Monkey Island. Okay. You Let's see. The like original? an ancient, ancient, yes. Okay. It was the special edition, but So when the was the last Monkey time Island. you remember them? Okay, so all future internal projects cancelled, most people are laid off. Uh, so Disney Interactive o might pick up the ones that are in progress, and they or they and or they might license them to third party developers, but I ain't thinking it's very likely. Sen's okay. point is legitimate in that LucasArts has not seriously developed a game worth playing in a long time. Like the last game I remember them even releasing was The Force Unleashed 2, which was garbage. I don't know. The Jedi Apprentice was a pretty good Soul Calibur character. <laughs> the good, no, the he wasn't. He was cheap. He was cheap, and I got mad every time I had to play against him, because I'm just a dude with a sword. You're a dude with a lightsaber and force powers. How is that a fair fight? Yeah, and you You're can right. and stand he was totally the back end. inappropriate for the lore. Actually, yeah. never mind. The Jedi Apprentice can get right out of my Soul Calibur. There we go. Like, dude, Spawn was a better fit for the Soul Calibur universe than the Jedi Apprentice. Wow. Man, now I want to go back and play Soul Calibur 2. Someone make a perfect version of the game so that I can have Spawn, Hihachi, and Link in the same game. Uh, so there's a little bit of detail to this in that while LucasArts is closed as a development studio, uh, the name is still around as a licensing house. They'll still slap the LucasArts logo on stuff. There's just no actual organization behind it. Also, you know, the people who used to work in those um, aspects right, got laid off. Yeah. Also important to consider. Speaking of things getting cancelled, the Wii U port of Aliens Colonial Marines has been cancelled. Does anybody... I think we own... I think we know maybe one person who owns a Wii U, collectively. Uh, alright, my audio was out for like two minutes there. Okay. Yeah, I completely I lost was... you there, Pix. Awesome. Alright, I'll redo that. Speaking of things... Speaking of things uh, that are no longer being developed, the Wii U port of Aliens Colonial Marines has been cancelled. I think yeah. the three of us might collectively know one person who actually owns a Wii U, though. So... 
I know one person who actually bought Colonial Marines, so... That one is, in fact, exactly the right number for people I know who have Wii U's. It's like, not getting the port of Aliens Colonial Marines is a super weird story because, wow, there's no games being made for the Wii U. And if this game were being made for the Wii U, that would not be an improvement to that situation. Nope. It's, I don't know. I never got on the Wii U bandwagon. And you'll notice when looking at release dates for things, you'll casually say, oh, it's coming out for everything. You know, play PC, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. The Wii U is conspicuously absent from most of those titles. It is. Nintendo might be doing a little better in the handheld side, though. I gotta stall for a minute and find out what I was thinking of that might be coming out for the 3DS that looked interesting. Uh, let's see, Black and White 2 have been out for a long time, right? They've been out for a while, yes. Oh yeah, Black and White 2 is at least a decade old. <laughs> a decade old? That's... That's not actually a thing, but okay. Uh, I'm looking... Well, you've got Pokemon XY, is that what you're talking about? The 3D... No. They're actually using 3D I... models for that one? Um... Wait, so you said Black and White 2, and I'm like, the Lionhead Studios game? You no. Know, I have made that same mistake with the um, Black and White, where you're the there's the creature and you're the god. Yeah, okay, I just got that joke, wow. I, yep. I have made that same mistake multiple times. Yeah, to be fair, the original Black and White game is pretty awesome. Uh, Pyro, are you perhaps thinking of the 3D Animal Crossing game that's never going to come out, despite the fact that it's been out for more than a year in Japan? You know, what I was thinking about is this Harvest Moon 3D that is a remake of a two-year-old Harvest Moon game. So I guess that shows you where Nintendo is at right now. I was gonna uh, say, like, I'm looking at a Mr. T game. Yeah, I'm getting a remake of a Harvest Moon game. I'm gonna pull my 3DS out of my closet. Nothing for the Mr. T game. <laughs> Wait, who is Mr. T? Uh, like, Mr. T, the guy with the mohawk? Is Mr. T like a superhero who revolves around kettles and uh, brewing things with leaves and delicious beverages? Um, he cures the common cold. No, it, it stars Mr. T as a superhero version of himself. Uh, the game is based on his portrayal in Mohawk Media's series of Mr. T graphic novels. No, so like, pity the fool Mr. T. What, what we're saying is Mr. T has finally run out of money and desperately needs something to do. So he's I making his own comics and, and games. Uh, I imagine he's like pulling an Anthony Bourdain and he's just bored. It's also possible. I mean, he was an in-game NPC but... in World of Warcraft for a long time. Perhaps still is, I don't know. And, and his night elf mohawk? Yes. Regardless, I think I'm going to pat my pink 3DS XL on its little screen and put it right back in my closet where it can sleep for the next five years. Yeah, my PSP is in the same boat. Yeah, the PSP was a great Oh, platform. remember me? Supposed had, to come out in June. You know, lumens That's, on it. That's, you know, again, PC, PlayStation 3, Xbox, but I'm looking forward to it. Keep Someday bringing it there up. will be another game for the Vita that will make owning a Vita a worthwhile endeavor. Oh wait, no, this is this is Earth. Oops. Uh, speaking of things being <laughs> acquired and uh, shuffled around by acquisition companies, Gearbox bought Homeworld off of THQ. Any of us Woo! have feelings about that? Yes, I'm all behind this. Uh, Tell I'm us about it. Simply, Homeworld is one of my favorite RTSs of all time. Uh, it is a wonderful three-dimensional space simulator that has you playing as a group of people who have just discovered warp travel and are going to use it to escape their horrible desert planet that they have been living on for as long as they can remember. And upon activating it for the first time, they accidentally send up a beacon to a uh, previously unknown galactic empire who destroys their entire planet for them discovering jump technology. And so the survivors oh, no. have to find their way across the universe, and it is a glorious game. It is amazing. If you have not played the original Homeworld, go get it. It's on good old games. It's fabulous. Uh, and do we, that do sends we really with that license. I I'm very happy that someone has picked it up because it fully is worth playing. It's worth creating a new game in. I'm behind this 100. percent It is sad that THQ has sat on that license for as long as it has. Do you think any skills relevant to the Borderlands franchise are relevant to Homeworld? None whatsoever. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the ability to click the left button with the mouse using your you index finger. You mean the part where they write software and a, a computer can execute that software to yes. generate pixels and stuff? Yes, that is critical to being able to, to play Homeworld. So it's not necessarily that Gearbox has bought it that has me excited. It's that someone who is actively doing things in gaming has shown interest in this franchise. Anything at all. 
just anything for these people. Oh, that's fair. Yep. So I'm glad that you have a relationship with Homeworld, because I wrote that in our notes, and I knew nothing about Homeworld and knew that Pixie didn't either. So I'm going to hope you can bail me out a second time in that uh, yep. Nintendo has announced a direct sequel to Link to the Past. Well, yes, I can talk about Link to the Past. It is possibly one of the best Super Nintendo games in existence, and I didn't know that it God. needed a sequel. Okay, punch me in the head, because this is the 3DS title I was thinking about. They're making Link to the Past 2 for 3DS. All right, then. That's what I was thinking of. Although, a uh, major disappointment in the fact that Link will not have pink hair in the sequel, so... Nope. This is a betrayal of the original spirit of Link to the Past, I feel. <laughs> You're doing it wrong, you changed the hair color. Link having okay. pink hair was ridiculous, and I liked it. Well, I actually do have an announcement pertaining to what we're going to be playing next week. Cool. And? Uh, for next week's podcast, I am going to be playing Don't Starve for the PC. I am I am pumped about this, and I might go in on this. Don't yes. Starve looks like it is fun. Two people for Don't Starve. Basically, it's Minecraft. I like not starving. Except you're stranded in a wilderness hell where... Everything wants to kill you, and it's just a survival game of how long can you last. So, being in Australia, then? Pretty much, yeah. You can sum it up like that. It's it's nightmarish, and everything wants you dead, and there's not enough food, and it's just m mainly a game of how long can you stay alive in this horrible, horrible place. It is an RPG that has a tech tree to ascend. You start not very powerful, and then by getting gear and skills, you become more powerful. And that is a thing that I like. I also love the animation style of this. Like it's it is this... also three platform Steam play. It is Windows, Mac, and Linux. Yep. So yes, for next week we are totally reviewing Don't Starve, and it will be great. All right then. Have you purchased it? Uh, I was going to the moment we were done with the show because, as we've proven, when I start downloading things while we're recording the podcast, Pixie gets very, very angry with me. Well, not only is it Steam play on three platforms, it is also available in a two pack bundle with a discount. Yes. We might. I might just pick up two two-pack bundles, and then you could pay for yours out of that, and we can equip the entire team with copies of Don't Starve. Sounds like a deal. Actual coverage next week. Huzzah! Actual game that is somewhat new! Also, I really want to play this Deponia thing, and right now it is... Well, sorry. Right now is in, unfortunately, whenever anyone listens to this over the radio, it will already be over. But at this moment, Tuesday evening, sorry to let you behind the, the curtain, kids... It is currently on sale for the next 14 hours, down from 20 So it to definitely won't seven. be then by the time this airs, so... Oh, you, you guys are getting hosed. Sorry. Yes, I. this adventure game looks super fun. I have no idea why I own it. This is weird. I think it was probably, as you suspected, in a, in a Humble Bundle. But I've it downloaded seems it was the in demo. the Humble Magicka Bundle, which I don't think I purchased. <laughs> you just have games kind of appearing on your system. They come out of my ears. It's like when a magician pulls a quarter out of your ears, except I have real quarters in my ears, and the quarters are video games. Is it wrong that the female love interest in this game is actually named Goal? Yeah, that sounds incredibly the transparent. The two characters' names are Rufus and Goal. Insert terrible impression of a uh, Central American soccer announcer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave that big, long, awkward silence in, except I'm going to put Boo Zalas under it. I... I'm 100% sure that that joke is going to occur at some point during this game. That said, it looks like a super spiffy, hand-drawn, uh, point-and-click adventure. I'm totally up for that right now. That is totally something I want to play. And at some point I want to try this Surgeon Simulator 2013. That That's going to be in the future. I imagine we should do this while drinking. We shall see. <laughs> that should be a part of Drunk Talk. Here's the quote from Forbes on the Steam store page for Surgeon Simulator. Even the guys who made the game can't play it well, and that's part of the appeal. Yeah, it's ridiculously no. hard. This is, it seems like it's quop, except for surgery. That it's is exactly what it is. Any, any real simulation at all. That, that is exactly what it is. Stuff. But you know what? That sounds awesome. Also, I'm glad you said it, because I would have had no idea how to pronounce quop. You can infer the pronunciation on it based on the fact that the sequel where you play as a horse is named Klop. It's a uh, I see. Sound. Yes, Sen Klop. Have you missed this? I have. There is no Klopping in my life. Okay, I will have I to link it. I cannot even believe that this is true. My mind is blown. Oh, Sen's a little out of the loop. I've sent I you a not, link, Sen. I have not Klopped. 
It is a like hundred meter dash, and you type Q W O P. You use those keys to move your dude's legs. Okay, I've never even heard. You of You are thing. one of today's lucky ten thousand. So yeah, you generally just kind of like fall face first and um, flail a bit. Whereas in Surgeon Simulator, it appears that you generally brutally murder your innocent patient. Which looks awesome. <laughs> just let's let this completely untrained guy perform surgery. So, Pixie, um, do you have anything to say about this Thor Dark World trailer? I have no idea what it is. Have you guys not watched it? It's the Thor sequel. It takes place after the events of the Avengers. Um, Thor is battling uh, an ancient race of dark elves led by the... Uh, Vengeful Malekith, am I pronouncing that right? I've never yes, read this, that is so way to pronounce that word. And Natalie Portman comes back as Jane Foster. Basically, that's all I know about it. Also, for some reason, um, Thor has to team up with Loki, but he's threatening to kill him if he double crosses him, which like happens all of the time that Loki gets involved with anything. So I don't know why you would do that, but. As far as I can tell, this is a premise of 100% of Thor stories. The Thor trusts Loki, and then it goes bad. I guess if you're going to abide by North Norse mythology, that's the right way to go. I suppose you might have a point. <laughs> I'm excited by the fact that Stellan Skarsgård is coming back for this movie for no other reason than I love pronouncing his last name. I could just sit in the chair and say Skarsgård. For hours at a time. So you sound like a pirate. You're talking at who is playing Malekith. Uh, I just navigated away from this tab, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, let's see... Waiting for it. Christopher Eccleston. What? We have a doctor. My mind is blown twice um, in a row. More importantly, he's also Destro from G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. <laughs> you didn't realize that? Wow. <laughs> Is that more important, Pixie? Is it really? <laughs> wow. Way to explain the joke, Pyro. Way to explain the joke. That seems pretty important to me. <laughs> Yes. The First idea is that it isn't movie. important at all. Here, I will jump on your stupid bandwagon of explaining the joke that I just made. <laughs> yes, Chris Eccleston, the first of the new Doctor Who's, is going to be playing the primary villain of the new Thor movie, and that is excellent. Because he is cool. Yeah, I'm down for this, mostly because Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth is handsome with that beard. And Thor was one of my favorite of the Marvel movies prior to the Avengers. I think I'm... That is a... It is one of the lesser respected ones, but I really liked it. I thought Kenneth Branagh did an excellent job of bringing North, Norse mythology to life. I thought that Chris Hemsworth did an excellent job of fighting in mud with no shirt Standing on. there being manly without a shirt. Yes. I think every time I drink a cup of beverage at a restaurant, I want to throw it on the floor and shout, Another! Yes, I that, that, that so had some good lines. I was doing that at uh, the, the uh, Hofbrau House in Vegas. As long as you pay $17 a mug, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Oh no, I'm sure they, I'm very sure they would still mind. Because, you know, somebody has to pick up all the broken glass. Yeah, I suppose so. It's a bit of a hazard, you see. Uh, so yeah, that's a thing. Eh, I'm gonna watch it. You can't not. Marvel Studio- Marvel Pictures has not done wrong yet. Indeed. Yeah, likewise, if our review of, uh, Don't Starve doesn't turn out to be enough content, I may actually play Injustice. Injustice it has looks fabulous lame. animations. Okay, not yes. like looks aesthetically, but I, I get the impression that it's probably lame. Yeah. The... I am basing this purely on the uh, Marvel vs. DC fighting game, but, you know. I I really never give... I never like the Mortal Kombat games. Like, I said that when, when we played the new Mortal Kombat reboot for the podcast, I gave compliments that this is the most playable of any of the Mortal Kombats. That still doesn't mean I really uh, liked it as a fighting game. I didn't feel like it was a good competitive game. It was fun while we were playing it. So it seems that Injustice is unlikely to gain much respect from the Evo scene on the basis of it has a lot of unblockable environmental moves um, <laughs> on not, not necessarily symmetrical stages. Right. Uh, so which side you start out on on which stage could have a major impact on the competitive nature of a match. All right. So shall we continue the news? Absolutely. If you've got more. We have announcements for Saints Row 4, because yes. Because yes. Because Tell yes, me. it's Saints Row 4, that's Nerd Talk's favorite game ever. I'm sending the link now. 
bam, there it is. We have our announced pre-order bonuses. I'm pre-ordering. If you pre-order oh, Saints dang. Row 4, you get upgraded to the Commander-in-Chief Edition, which comes with the America Weapon. Which, yes, it's as silly as it sounds. It's a gun that has, like, 18 barrels on it. It has fires every type of ammo at once. And is painted red, white, and blue. Also, the Screaming Eagle yes. Jet. Yes! And the Uncle Sam suit costume. I hope there's a female version of it. With the oh, beard, of course. Be. My god, I'm already so hyped for this game. I am plus one-ing this. Just look at the America weapon. It's even spelled properly. There's no... No, a there's no start. U. Apostrophe M-E-R-I-C-A. That is not how you spell Murica. <laughs> there's no U. Yeah. But yes. That, Can't that have Murica without you. <laughs> oh, that's like oddly sweet. It's like you'd put that on a on a romantic postcard or something. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to make that e-card now. <laughs> yeah, that is the kind of romantic e-card you send somebody that you're marrying so that they can get immigration rights. That seems like an oddly specific situation. Okay, but there's there's a there's a there's a caveat to this e card. It has to be a certain color. You know what? I'm really thinking next week we have to do the Nerd Talk 2013 PC Gaming Blowout. I'm down for that. By which you mean? We're gonna review three PC games for next week. Three reviews, one podcast. Deponia, Don't Starve, and what's your third? Surgeon Simulator 2013. Oh, oh man. I don't think I'm in with you on that one. I, I, I think I can go two of three. All right, I'm in for all three. Let's yeah, go. I don't think I want to play Surgeon Simulator either. I'm going to send you the link that I found to it. Looks a little yeah. grotesque. I think this will sell you. Sell whom right. on what? Watch I've that seen, video. I've seen the same trailer as you. <laughs> it's not a trailer. I'm not offended by Surgeon Simulator 2013, but I am unlikely to spend money on it. It looks gross to me. Quop is a funny concept for, like, two minutes. I don't think it has much more shelf life than that. Indeed. But this will be a real system shock to switch from. We haven't played any video games in months, and then three in one show. I'm just already giggling that one of the levels of this game is in, at, in the back of a speeding ambulance during rush hour, and you have to deal with that. That doesn't sound like a thing I want to deal with. <sighs> All right, so that sets up for next week. We are at just under an hour. Do we keep going? You want to talk about Minecraft? Eh, I haven't got a whole lot to say, but I guess I can. All right. All right, so, uh, speaking of things I was reluctant to do, Pyrosim gave me a copy of Minecraft a long time ago, legally purchased, and uh, he has been slowly teaching me to play Minecraft. I figure it's one of those things that is just so pervasive at this point that, you know, it's a touchstone and you gotta figure out what it's about so that you can talk this to people about it. Basically, this is a rite of passage into video gaming adulthood at this point because everybody has played Minecraft except me. So I'm okay. going into this totally blind, have no idea what I'm doing. First thing when I spawn in, I find Enderman and I don't know how they work. So I was like, hey, what's this thing? And I walk towards it and I die. <laughs> no, wait, no, that's not right. I didn't die. I went, oh no, this thing is hostile, and I start running away. I run immediately into a river, which I don't know how to swim or not drown in, and then, you know, start drowning. <laughs> and then we, prevent, we pretend that this is a Resident Evil quick time event, and I yell out, press spacebar to not die. Well, you said specifically, and I quote, press spacebar to not drown. <laughs> press X to not get eaten by zombies. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, As it turns out, I'm very bad at Minecraft. <laughs> Pixie got the full trial by fire that everybody gets at the start of playing Minecraft. There is a very important lesson. It's a very literal trial by fire, if I'm thinking of what you are thinking of. Uh, yeah, you absolutely are. So, the everybody starts Minecraft the same way. Uh, it's scary outside, you build a house to hide from zombies, and then you feel a little safe, you know how to go out during the daytime and, and stay inside at night, and then you go underground and you're like, oh my goodness, there's all these precious resources here. Getting some iron, getting some redstone, and getting some diamonds. Which we immediately fashioned a couple of diamond pickaxes with. Which are, you know, the best kind of pickaxe ever. I'm going to go ahead and lie in this story to say that we immediately used those pickaxes to dig straight down. No, we didn't. I didn't even get a chance to equip mine before, you know, continuing to dig around with my old one. Because my old one was about to break. So I was like, okay, I'm going to use up this one. 
and then I'm going to, you know, switch to my fancy pants new one. And immediately I dig straight down somewhere, like, ooh, resources or whatever. And I dig down one block directly below me, fall into a cavern below me, directly into lava. And of course I start screaming, oh god, help, ah, why? Because I'm on fire. And Pyro comes over to help me because, you know, I'm screaming. And he also falls into the hole. We both die. All of our stuff is gone. Including Sen. Sen is gone. Yes. There's usually not consequences for dying in Minecraft because your stuff just sort of lies around and you lose some experience, except experience does not have any consequence whatsoever. So it's like, yeah, you normally just keep making progress. And not this way. This way all of your stuff burns up and goes away. Fortunately, uh, we still have a fair amount of iron in the treasure chest back at our monster shelter, I believe, so we're not that far behind on the tech tree. Boy, I Other do... adventures. Um, what particular problem did you have with getting hungry, Pixie? Uh, I can't bring myself to punch the pigs. I the think pigs that are they are cute, cute, and they're nice, and they don't hurt anything, and so I can't make myself eat them. As a vegetarian in real life, every time I start up a new Minecraft world, I tend to try and do a vegetarian conduct. At least at the very beginning, until I have a huge wheat farm where I can feed myself forever. And that's, like, super hard, the way uh, hunger is balanced in that game. You get pretty hungry pretty quick if you're not playing on Peaceful. Um, and I've, I've recently learned that I need to stop hiding from monsters in order to accomplish that conduct. You have to go out and you have to kill skeletons and use their bones to make your crops grow. That is how you can be a vegetarian. You must kill in order to not kill. Something but. kind of poetic about that. Indeed. Kill the undead. The undead have it coming. <laughs> you think you're interested in continuing your Minecraft adventures, Pixie? Uh, well, I'm basically starting all over, and I feel very guilty about the fact that I've caused us both to be brutally killed in a pit of fire and lose <laughs> all of our progress, which we spent hours getting. I totally understand and sympathize with that guilt, even completely in light of the fact that there are server commands and I can just spawn more diamonds whenever I want. It's the principle of the thing. I, un I understand feeling bad, and I have totally felt bad in the same way, and learned about digging down in the same way. I think everybody does. It's a rite of passage. Ugh. So, I, I might give it a shot, but I think I need to take a break for right now, while I still feel really terrible about it. You're gonna put that book in the freezer? What does that even mean? I believe it is a friend's reference. There was an episode where Joey was reading a scary novel, and it was giving him nightmares, and he was hiding from the book by putting it in the freezer. I, I know this fully third-hand by pop culture. By TV tropes, is what you're saying. I don't even think it's that, although it might be. Do book and fridge? Uh, okay, I have a Yahoo Answers about this. Indeed, it is from Friends. He was reading The Shining. Man, Not I read The Yahoo Shining Answers. in middle school. Maybe it was high school, I can't remember. It probably was middle school, because... I read The Shining after hearing about it from you many, many years ago, and read it as a result of that, and that was in early high school. I don't actually remember. It might have... I'm pretty sure it was high school, though, because um, middle school I got away with uh, rereading all of the Harry Potter novels for the stupid reading counts points that I needed for my program. Between reading all of those and the Lord of the Rings books, I was pretty much set in middle school, but... Somehow this qualifies as sticking it to the system to read books that actually interest you instead of books that you don't like very much. It's probably a problem with our educational system being designed by Puritans who think that the less fun a thing is, the more valuable it is. Um, no, it's actually just that the stuff that they put on their reading counts, like lists the stuff that they have created tests for, is stuff that's far below my reading level, and I'm going to sound really conceited saying that, but I was reading at an 8th grade level in first, so obviously those books bored me because they were... It was like trying to read C-Spot Run in high school. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's so far below me to be boring. Uh -huh. And so I couldn't bring myself to do it. I was volunteering at that point to be like, I will write book reports if you will let me read stuff that is at an adult level, because that is where I am in my capacity. Indeed. I am glad to hear that I'm not the only one who had to suffer through that stupid reading counts program, though. I thought it sucked. School Part of that whole standardized testing thing. <laughs> If I ever relayed my anecdote on air about the fact that New Mexico public schools had an exam named the Woodcock Johnson exam? Yes. I believe you <laughs> that, have. That is an anecdote I never tire of relaying. Oof. So, I, I love how we waited for the uh, 
teacher in our group to have technical difficulties before we started <laughs> before we started smack talking the educational system. To be fair, my router decides when it wants to connect to the internet, not the other way around. Oh no, my connection's totally fine, Sen says. Oh, my connection's fine, it's the router that's terrible. I don't think you know how routers work. It's a device that allows my computer to connect to the internet. Hence, it's part of your connection. Yeah, no, my actual, like, ISP is doing just fine. I rest my case. Oh man, I'm looking at the store page for Fez on Steam, and being May highly 1st. disappointed... That it is slightly more than one week from today, because that would be number one on my list for our PC extravaganza. I'm going to so be all over Fez. So should we hold off on the PC extravaganza? Until no, Fez comes out? I guess yeah. we'll actually do coverage at a reasonable rate, like a podcast where people have time to play video games. It's true. Uh, Pyro and I are in the midst of finals coming up. Uh, I'll be in, I believe, my last week of classes, and then finals, and then done for the semester so and then suddenly this enormous influx of time out of nowhere well for you anyway because you will have graduated uh i on the other hand need to immediately start with my internship for eaeco have either of you seen the list of movies that are coming out this summer it's kind of the year of the geek you know people have said that in previous years <laughs> like well, let's look at may may we have iron man 3 Star Trek, um, a new DreamWorks uh, animated film epic, and a, quote, sexy vampire movie. Because we needed another one of those. Sexy then we're vampire immediately, movies. Unheard then we're immediately of. getting the sci-fi Will Smith movie, Man of Steel, the new Pixar film. The great and, freaking Gatsby comes out this May. More Z. Just before your birthday, Pyro. Yay! Great Gatsby is one I am very excited about. Uh, uh, Star Trek. I'm kind of getting excited about R.I.P.D., which you guys may not have seen the trailer for. Uh, it's like basically Ghostbusters, isn't it? It's Men in Black meets Ghostbusters, except the Ghostbusters are dead, too. Yeah. Also, well. Jeff Bridges channeling Rooster Cogburn appears to be the partner in the movie, which I could say that could only be better yeah, if I'm Jeff in. Bridges was actually playing Rooster Cogburn, like from the Cohen... Uh, remake of uh, True Grit. Like, if that was actually supposed to be Rooster, that would be phenomenal. So, yeah, I'm in. Whatever. It, uh, it looks like a silly comic book movie, and I could totally deal with that. So Pixie's level of commitment to R.I.P.D. there exactly is my level of commitment to Arkham Origins. I'll try it. Maybe it'll win me. I don't know. I'm, Pyro. I'm really, 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 really hoping that Pacific Rim is amazing. That That's what I want most this time. And Sen continues to talk over me. <laughs> I'm staying on topic. I was, God, you don't even know what I was trying to say. Well, I'm done, so go ahead. <sighs> so, speaking of, um, I don't know, this is much ado about nothing count as geeky, because, I mean, Shakespeare? <laughs> much ado about nothing is incredibly geeky. Nathan Fillion in Much Ado About Nothing, directed by Joss Whedon. That is so geeky that it hurts. Like, June 7th. I cannot imagine anything more geared to set off nerd culture. So, June 7th. Going to load ain't at coolnews.com All I'm saying. and see if their servers have melted. Yep, we're in. We are so in. Because you, you are a total Shakespeare dork, as I recall. I particularly like Much Ado About Nothing, um, mostly for the reason that its title is a pun about genitalia. Like, people regard Shakespeare as being hyper-classy, uh, for and the reason that they do not Shakespeare's necessarily dirty. understand it. Yeah. <laughs> Shakespeare has some humor in it designed to entertain the proletariat. Uh, yeah, we've got World War Z, which I'm not sure that I actually want, because, I don't know, it seems weird to me and wrong. World War Z seems like it might be an okay movie that is totally unrelated to the book. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's 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 what I wasn't able to put my finger on, is that... It's a uh, misappropriation of the title. It's, it's like the Resident Evil movies. They're not bad on their own. It's just the fact that they're not Resident Evil movies. So that that seems to be my problem with that. Uh, we've got Kick-Ass 2 in August. Uh, a Percy Jackson movie in August. Yeah, Sen, you yeah, might be right. They decided to make another one of those. A Riddick movie in September. Woo, Riddick. Wait, the Insidious got a sequel? Possibly? Uh, a Machete Kills, what? Yep, Machete sequel. Looks like a Sin City sequel? God, this just yep. gets weirder. Sin City 2, supposed to be out. 
a carry remake Ender's Game in November. Obviously, we've got Thor. We mentioned that. Uh, another Hunger Games movie. Yeah, let's not forget, Iron Man 3 is next weekend. That, that's a thing. Yeah, I won't get to see it opening weekend because finals, but, you know, you guys have fun. I am I'll be inside being sad. Yay, no finals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Second Hobbit movie. Yeah, this year. I don't know. Riddick has Carl Urban and Katie Sackhoff in it. And I kind of want this uh, weird space action movie. Uh, just take Vin Diesel out of it and just have it be some weird space movie in this weird universe with Carl Urban and Katie Sackhoff. Oh, that come on. Me. Vin Diesel is fine when he's playing Riddick. I have no problem with Vin Diesel. The sh- and I think Vin Diesel is a pretty good actor. Uh, the script for... Man, what was the terrible movie? The uh, Pacifier? I don't know. The Chronicles of Riddick? The Chronicles of Riddick. <laughs> the script for that movie was toilet paper. Yeah. Like, that movie had Judy Dench in it, and I am, I'm like, a profound defender of Judy Dench, and that movie was garbage. It's true. How do you mess up something with Judy Dench in it? Which is she's weird, gonna, because... She's gonna frown. Oh, God. And then you were done. Pitch Black was really good. Pitch Black was, like, this super tight, smart, uh, weird space thriller. And right. then they made this epic uh, high-budget sequel to it that was no good at all. That was and now poop. maybe they're going to bring it back? Yeah, supposedly it features Riddick stuck on a planet with monsters. The, this sounds like Pitch Black again. Pitch Blacker. Pitch Black 2, Electric Boogaloo. Why does everyone make that joke? Because Pitch Black 2, Pitch Black Harder seemed obvious. And the Boogaloo joke that everyone makes didn't? That's the joke, Sen. Uh, it's too late for sarcastic comedy. Well, the... somebody shouldn't have been late to the show then. Primary reason that I'm a fan of Katie Sackhoff is for her role as Starbuck in the Battlestar Galactica television series. And I'm thoroughly amused by the fact that um, her fan club refers to themselves as the Spanx. I think that's a good name for a fan club for Katie Sackhoff. And, like, she is totally, like, has a sense of humor about it and is, a uh, she goes on podcasts and does great interviews. So, I don't know how much news this is, but Insomniac Games announced that they're creating an animated Ratchet and Clank film that will be coming to theaters in 2015. Like, I don't know, I feel like that franchise is so dated at this point I, that it's not really culturally relevant. I'm just really skeptical about anything that's that far off. Like, it's dated and also... It's not going to be old enough, I think, by the time it comes out to bank on nostalgia. I feel like it's in that weird place where it should be left alone for now. Right. Like, I've never disliked a Ratchet and Clank game. They're just always kind of, yep, those are there. There is a stark divide in this world, as far as I can tell, between people who played Ratchet and Clank and people who played Jack and Daxter. And I was a Jack and Daxter kid, and I love Jack and Daxter, which is, like, basically the same as Ratchet and the Clank in many, many meaningful ways. But, I don't know, Ratchet and Clank doesn't mean anything to me, whereas if they were making a Jack and Daxter movie, I would be on that like white on rice. I don't know, I think I'd go see a Ratchet and Clank movie. You know, I'd probably try it. Eh, I don't know. I'm not, like, gonna be waiting outside for tickets, though. Totes. Yeah, at any rate, so I guess we've picked out what we're doing next week, which is Sen wants to play uh, Don't Starve and that surgery simulator game, and also, what was the third one? Deponia. Deponia. Yeah, there's no way I was going to remember that. So yes, PC Gaming Overload next week. Suddenly, lots of games appear. We're going to see how many of these we can shotgun through in a week. Thankfully, they're all indie games, so none of them are longer than three hours. Well, except for Don't Starve, which is a pseudo-roguelike, meaning it is just a billion hours. And likewise, Deponia, which is an adventure game, so those go on, like, forever. They and don't go on surgery forever. simulator, they just go on which for forty hours the first time you play them, and then like two hours the second time you play them. Right, and surgeon simulator, which is technically an endless game because there are infinite variations to modes. It turns out maybe this presumption about the length of these games was not very apt at all. Damn it, we should just play three AAA titles. Those are over in like four hours these days. Fair enough. I have these modern warfare's that I've been meaning to play through the single player of sitting in my Steam library. Oh, that's right. You bought those. The same way you bought the pony, I didn't realize it. False. I remember buying the Modern Warfare games, knowing that I would probably never get around to playing them. I just want a tagline for Deponia that says, Deponia, you probably already own this. (laughs) (sighs) 
At any rate. Buying Neponia? Don't worry about it. You've already got it. You didn't know it. We just charged your card. It's fine. You probably thought you spent that money on, you know, terrible fast food. We did you a favor, honestly. Seriously. The hell are you eating? <laughs> this is Deponia. Doing your large intestine a solid. Ah, uh, That was... We're ending on a poop joke tonight, kids. <sighs> Don't go there, San. Alright, so, next week, bunch of PC games. Into games. Gonna be great. Hopefully. Woo. There'll be games, anyway. Yeehaw. They will be interactive experiences. Indeed. Uh, after that, who knows? We'll need to check our schedules and see what's going on. Pyro, any progress being made with the NAB stuff? I'm gonna guess no, because I haven't either. <laughs> nope, none whatsoever. To the extent that I have not downloaded uh, all of the footage for NAB yet. I don't think I have the stuff that you shot. Like, I have the hot tub footage and nothing else. Um, there are a couple of little clips on YouTube that are available for a viewer to watch. Um, there's one from the Crack and Egg restaurant. No, the Cracked Egg restaurant. And there is Ren Graves' speech about the invisibility spell. <laughs> he was drunk at the time. Of course. And in a hot tub. At any rate, uh, so we'll keep working on that and we'll crank it out whenever we get to it, probably in a couple more weeks. And, uh... I think that's really going to do us for this week. So, I guess I'll wrap things up. In the meantime, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Pyrosim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll see you next week. <laughs>